All right. Well, th welcome everybody to our on farm risk management and technology workshop series. Glad you could join us in person and those of you watching the recording here. We've got some great guest presenters, and we want to help you figure out which platforms are good for you to take your farm business to the next level. My name is Ben Zoba. I am the beginning farmer educator at New Entry Sustainable Farming Project. I'm filling in for Jennifer Hashley, who has been hosting these workshops. And uh, her email address is there. She's a wellspring of knowledge for all things ag, especially here in the Northeast, but uh, that's my email too, if you need to get in touch with anything related to this workshop. And if you all would like, you could put in the chat your, um, your name, pronouns, if you're comfortable with that, farm name, where you're located, then our speakers will know kind of where you're coming from. And uh, video is optional, but it's fun to see people's faces. And when our presenters speak, I know when I speak, it's nice to <laughs> get visual feedback from people's faces, but we understand too, if you gotta turn off the camera, you know, it's the evening hour for many folks, but uh, just a little, I'm going to give a brief intro to new entry and kind of breeze over what we do and then I'll, I'll introduce our speakers and, and hand it off to them. But our mission is basically to train the next generation of farmers. And we're here in the, in Beverly, Massachusetts, a little bit north of Boston. And we've got a few different program areas. We have a, a farmer training team that I'm a part of. And we have a, a food hub and a national program. And I'll just touch on each of these programs quickly. In our farmer training program, we've got courses, workshops, and we have an incubator farm where farmers can lease a quarter acre of land their first year, half acre their second year, and go up to a full acre their third year. And on top of the land, we have, they can have access to bunch of equipment and infrastructure and technical assistance from our staff here. Some of our classes, we teach a crop production course during the growing season. We have a demonstration plot that's like our classroom. It's a hands-on course. And you kind of go through the growing season and learn along the way. So that'll be starting in May. And then we also do teach a farm business planning course in the fall and winter. So the next offering of this course will be in October. We just finished up the winter course for this year. Uh, but yeah, it walks through the steps of creating a farm business plan. And we introduce folks to various government grant options, service providers, and all kinds of different resources that might help somebody who's either starting a farm business or kind of tweaking their farm business. We have a YouTube channel. You can see a virtual tour of our property and a little introduction to some of our programs at our YouTube channel, New Entry Sustainable Farming Project. And this recording will be up on that channel. Our food hub is an aggregated CSA. So we buy food from our current incubator farmers and from our alumni farmers and aggregate that and have a, a CSA that we distribute around the Boston Metro area. We also do some food access work and the food hub is a training tool itself for our farmers so they can Get, improve their uh, post-harvest handling and, and marketing skills. Finally, we have what's called the field network, which is a professional development network for incubator farms across the country and also apprenticeship learning programs. Um, so people can kind of learn best practices, communicate with each other and, and develop our, our programs in collaboration with each other. So this, tonight's workshop is one of several in a series, all kind of related to risk management and how technology can help. 
So we started in November talking about legal risk. And then in December, January, we dealt with financial risk and production risk. And now we're in the marketing and sales platform por portion of the series. You can see other previous workshops that we recorded at our website. You can see the link there. Uh, I'll be sending follow-up resources to all the registrants with links and things as well. And so uh, you, can, you can check out the previous recordings as well as this recording there. And we do want to thank our funder, Northeast Extension Risk Management Education, or NERMI, which is part of the USDA's National Institute of Food and Agriculture uh, grant program. So we're thankful that they support this work and make it so we can offer these for free to farmers. And uh, they do like us to track data and stuff. So we will be um, doing like a quick poll at the beginning, just a two question poll and at the end, and I'll be sending out a workshop evaluation uh, via email to all the registrants as well. So if you can fill that out, it does help us um, kind of track how people are benefiting from these workshops and kind of how we can meet farmers' needs better in the future. So speaking of polls, I will launch this one now. I'll give you just a minute or two because it's only two questions. And while you do that, I will start um, I'll just give a brief introduction to our guest presenters and then maybe guess as you start, you can kind of fill in the gaps, just introduce yourself a, a little bit. But um, first we've got Emily, who's the customer success manager at Forager. And she's got a, a presentation for us about Forager and uh, she's, she's gonna be followed by Jenny Wooster from Piccadilly Farm, who will talk about how she actually uses Forager for her farm business. And then after Jenny, we're going to have Hannah, who's the co-founder and CEO of Farm Drop. And she'll tell us all about Farm Drop and the little amount of time that she has. And, and she'll be followed by Lou Harris, or Farmer Lou, who is going to talk about how he uses uh, farm job for his his business. So I think without further ado, I'll just oops, I'll just stop sharing my screen and hand the mic over to Emily. Emily, thanks so much for joining us and uh, welcome. Thank you, Ben. Um, I am going to share my screen in a moment and pull up my presentation. But before that, I just want to say super grateful to get to be a part of this webinar tonight. Um, I'm Emily Lefebvre from Forager. I'm our customer success manager. And I've been with the company for about three years. And I don't know if you saw on the previous slide, but prior to that, my background is in um, procuring food for various reasons. Uh, I worked at a couple of food co-ops, one in Portland, Maine, one in Keene, New Hampshire, um, the Portland Food Co-op and Manadoc Co-op. And before that, I was in the restaurant industry. So it's a very near and dear thing to me, local food. And uh, excited to show you how Forager plays into that. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Looking good. Bring us in a slideshow mode. So I just have a quick deck to run through to give you just some background info on Forager. I am hopefully gonna have time to give a really quick sneak peek of the platform so you can see after I talk about it, what it actually looks like. Um, but I love doing one-on-one -on -one demos as well. We're not gonna have time to see the full functionality of Forager today. So if this looks interesting to you after you've seen um, what I have to share, then I have my contact info available at the end of this deck, uh, which will be distributed to everyone. Please reach out to me if you'd like to see a full platform demo or even just talk on the phone to learn a little bit more. 
Uh, okay, so what is Forager? Uh, you know, at our core, we are a technology platform, but before that, we're really a mission-based startup. We launched out of Portland, Maine. Uh, we began with just a few stores, including the Portland Food Co-op, uh, a handful of, uh, of trusting farmers willing to launch this thing with us, and just a mission to make local food more widely available for everyone by removing costs and challenges in the procurement process so that specifically wholesalers will, will source more food locally. So we are a business to business tool, um, not yet dabbled in uh, direct to consumer. So this is a tool that really is focused on scaling wholesale local procurement. Um, like myself, many of our team members come from food backgrounds. We also have some great folks who come from more of a customer success um, tech background, but a lot of us got our feet wet by being a part of uh, the supply chain or food procurement. So um, a lot of really passionate team members on the forager side um, that keep this thing running. If you couldn't tell, our what makes us special is we're 100% committed to local. So, you know, there are a lot of tech platforms that uh, are adjacent to what we do, uh, similar functionality, but what makes this really stand out to me is that uh, our goal is to increase the sales of local food. Uh, at the end here, true partner, not just a technology. You know, another thing that sort of sets us apart is I think our team really going above and beyond what can be automated on our forager platform. You know, when it comes to local food, there's so much more than just placing orders through a web cart, you know, there's relationship building, there's crop planning, there's some things that just can't really be automated. And so our team um, really strives to go above and beyond helping farmers find new wholesale connections and helping buyers expand their local programs in that way. Uh, so this will all come together when I show you the platform, but really the very simple boiled down idea here for um, on the buyer side, at least is, you know, on the left side of this diagram, we have many local relationships being streamlined through this platform um, so that grocers, restaurants, institutions, nonprofits, those are our, our main customer types are able to procure, order, receive, invoice pay and communicate with all of their suppliers through one interface. So it makes a, a program that, you know, the goal is to always order from as many local suppliers as you possibly can, support as many local companies as you can, but doing all of that directly one-on-one -on -one eventually can be um, challenging. And especially in, in today's day where there's a lot of turnover, um, possibly, you know, labor shortages going on within your company, um, having a one-stop shop for all of your local farmers and a place where you can access all this historical data in one place is really uh, important and helpful. Forager, how are we doing? We've got a great uh, network of suppliers and buyers. Right now we have over 400 local suppliers using our platform and over 40 active buyers of, of various types and sizes. Uh, over 150,000 unique items on the platform. And we're in 10 states and that is growing. Um, you know, we're, we started in Portland, Maine. Our next move was to expand outward into the rest of New England, but we do have locations in the Midwest and beyond and we're constantly trying to grow that of course and having conversations in other states. So, um, you know, it really just starts with you know, going into a new geography, it starts with a couple of suppliers and a couple of buyers who believe that this can help them and, and that's all it takes. So um, in six years, we've managed to grow quite a bit. We like to think we're the market leader in building direct local buying programs for retailers, because as I said before, we're more than just a platform. We're a one-stop shop for your local program, a standard operating procedure, and a team of dedicated people here to uh, really help you scale local programs. Uh, let's see. I want to give a quick sneak peek of the platform. Hopefully I can do a pretty smooth transition of tabs here. 
So I hope that this, you know, I'd love to be able to show you everything, but I hope that this will just bring it together full circle a little bit. What I'm showing you right now is a demo account for a, a supplier interface. Um, this is the view where suppliers log in and program in all of their information. And Forager, our team does a lot to get this set up for you. So we just give you a quick sign up form to fill out. And all of this information is something that we actually populate for you. So we get your logo in here, important business information. Uh, there's a way for you to customize your delivery schedule with your different buyers you're connected to here if you have one. So you can you know, let them know what days you can deliver, how much time you need uh, as for notice for you to receive an order to be able to deliver on those days, order minimums, delivery radius, shipping and delivery fees, et cetera, can all be programmed in. And then your product list. So uh, like I said, when you sign up, we collect the product information that we need from you. We get all of these items loaded into the platform for you. And then all you need to do is interact with the platform as changes occur. So uh, if you have, you know, in, in this supplier's case, there's a total of nine items. Right now they have six that are available. They have three that are currently not available, not in season perhaps. All you would need to do is come into the platform and indicate that product's availability as it changes um, to make sure that your full product mix is available. Nothing is in here that shouldn't be ordered. All the other details of your items can be changed within this interface as well. So you can change your image, name, pricing, case pack, whatever you need to do right here within the platform. You can even customize your pricing down to specific buyers. If you have a deal running with one of your buyers, and but that shouldn't change the, the main price for the rest of your buyers, for example. So we've really tried to create a tool that's super easy to uh, update once it's been set up. This is a mobile friendly site, so you can pull it up on any device that you have um, so that if you're on the go in the fields, um, not, it's not convenient to be at your computer, but something has gone out of stock or something has changed availability wise, you can just pull it up on your smartphone and make the adjustment right then and there. Lastly, I just wanna show you that uh, this platform stores historical ordering data for you as well. So any order that's been placed by a, by a buyer can be found here. You can click into any of them and find the itemized detail of that order. You can export these as reports um, and you can search of course by buyer, date uh, and all of those things. One thing that makes Forger really great is that you don't actually have to come into this platform if nothing has changed with your availability. Uh, all ordering activity just comes straight to your email inbox. So. You know, all of this is here for you, super user-friendly interface to play around with, but if you just want to set and forget your list, uh, it kind of does all the work for you after that. Uh, you just have to get those order emails. So uh, that was a pretty quick sneak peek, but I don't want to eat too far into my time. So I am going to just move over to my deck again. Because the last thing I want to go over before I hand it off to Jenny is getting set up on Forager. So we try to keep this as simple as possible. I have a link to our signup form right here. Uh, it asks you all the info about your product availability, basic business info, and delivery radius that we need to set up your Forager account. Uh, we build it for you. And then we offer a virtual training session from our customer success team, most likely me, uh, where we just walk you through the more detailed version of what I just showed you, just how to maintain your Forger account and really get the most out of it. We also take that time to talk to you about what your goals are for growing wholesale on the platform and in general, what kind of customers do you wanna work with? And we can share details with you at that time about who's on our platform, who would be a good fit? Who can you deliver to? What frequency and all of those, those things that make your relationship work. After that, uh, to be a supplier on Forager, you just need to maintain that account. Make sure your product availability is up to date. We can help you. Um, our customer success team is very involved where we need to be. So, um, you know, keeping it up to date should be pretty simple. And we do our best to, we call it spotlight, but just boost you, you know, when you first come on board, we announce that you're new to the Forager platform. 
as buyers come on board in your area, we make warm introductions. Uh, we can facilitate conversations, visits, uh, sending of samples, all of these things. We help with marketing where we can, um, as much or as little as you want us to do, to do that, of course. But uh, moving forward, we just try to be a helpful partner for you um, to expand your wholesale. So I think I have talked enough. I hope that gives you a good idea of uh, what Forager is all about. But I think um, it's best heard from someone who actually uses our Forager platform. So I'd like to introduce one of our uh, farmer partners on Forager, Jenny Worcester from Piccadilly Farm. Um, I'm sure she'll tell you more about this, but a uh, fantastic certified organic produce farm in Winchester, New Hampshire. Piccadilly has been a supplier on Forager since 2018. And since then um, they've witnessed over 450 orders, almost 300K in sales through transacting over the Forager platform um, alone. And I had the great pleasure of working with Jenny when I was a produce buyer at the Monadnock Food Co-op in Keene, New Hampshire, who uses our platform today. So I think that's enough from me and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and let Jenny jump in. Thanks, Emily. Uh, so yes, I'm Jenny Worcester from Piccadilly Farm, Winchester, New Hampshire. We are a certified organic and real organic project certified farm. We grow uh, vegetables and on about 30 acres. Um, and we sell through a community supported agriculture program and also wholesale. Our sales are about equally split between CSA and wholesale. Uh, I have used technology platforms for our CSA program, but had not used a lot of technology for our wholesale. Uh, our wholesale is uh, basically direct. We sell direct um, to and do distribution directly for the most part. We do sell through a few food hubs, um, which do use technology platforms that we have to upload our information to. But Forager, Forager came to us in 2018 uh, via the Monadnock Food Co-op. Um, they're a food co-op that's about 30 minutes from us in our county. And uh, we are one of their main suppliers of local produce and have been since they began, I forget what year they started up. Uh, but they really, we started in wholesale right when the co-op started up, maybe 10 years ago. And our primary way of communicating with our wholesale buyers has been through a weekly email. So year round on every Monday, I'll send an email to a number of buyers and then buyers can reply to that email with what they'd like to buy. And uh, in 2018, when the Monadnock Food Co-op decided to use Forager as their purchasing platform, uh, we shifted over to doing that with them. And so on our end, uh, as the seller, there's no cost to us to use Forager. So we can become a Forager user um, and upload all of our products and then be connected to buyers. And so at first we're connected to the Monadnock Food Co-op as a buyer from us. And as I hadn't really used a platform for our wholesale before, I was a little curious and also maybe even a little dubious about how it would go. Would, would the platform itself become a barrier to the relationships that we'd built um, with the buyers at the co-op? And um, it turned out to not be the case at all. Uh, we continue to have and continue to have relationships, of course, with the buyers. And Forager has made it easier and cleaner to, to make the sales. In fact, our sales have, have increased over time um, through using the platform. There are a number of things that uh, I liked. Um, initially, the setup was, was very simple. Um, as Emily described, Forager actually did most of the input of the, the populating, she said, of, of the information. So once we signed on, I had to send the list in whatever format I had. I had an Excel spreadsheet. So I could send my numbers over of what our case counts were and what our prices were, and those were populated. And, and of course I had to go through and double check, um, but pretty easy to get started. And um, one thing I like about using a technology platform like this as compared to 
a phone call with availability or an email with availability once a week is that Forager keeps things live in the moment. So uh, I can suddenly have um, no arugula on a Wednesday uh, for a Friday delivery. It hasn't been ordered yet, but I can take arugula off or the Napa cabbage harvest begins and I can just automatically add that in. And so the buyers can see in real time that those things are available. So it's it saved me a lot of time. And the other thing that um, that a technology platform like Forager does is uh, when the orders come to us, uh, because the buyers simply type in the orders, they come back to us um, as the farm, um, there's there's no mistakes because they there's there's less room for me to make an error um, in getting those orders delivered. Um, so Forager will send the order um, to my email, and um, like Emily described, the timing has already been automated. So if someone wants to place an order from me, but they're they're too short and say they want the order in six hours. And, you know, and I said, no, you have to give me two days. It, it won't let them do that um, for one thing. And then uh, the order comes to me um, as the seller itemized and with pricing and totals. And so when I create that invoice, uh, I'm much less likely to make a mistake than I was in the past when somebody say ordered two cases of bunched carrots but I mistakenly wrote down one, um, or I might've had a different case count in mind and uh, than what they thought they were ordering. So um, a platform like Forager eliminates those kinds of mistakes. Uh, another advantage that I really saw in this platform, particularly in working with um, the Monadnock Food Co-op, which is our entry, um, we were already making a lot of sales to them. We're one of their primary uh, produce uh, providers, and uh, it seemed like Forager, by by having the co-op have a, a very straightforward way that all of their sellers could sell, um, it actually opened up their purchasing to farms of various sizes. So when a new farm came in, came online, or someone came in with a new product, um, it was just a matter of one conversation with the produce department in this case and then getting hooked up with Forager and saying, this is how you sell. You're a new farmer in town and um, you, you know, you're know you gonna raise leeks and garlic, then you get them on Forager here and you know put your pricing. And, and so it, it creates, I think has created, and I've seen it for the Monadnock Food Co-op create um, a great platform for the larger growers, the smaller growers, the new growers um, to begin to sell to, in this case, a local food co-op. Um, there's another aspect of the platform that I really like, which is um, it enables us to set up deals. Um, a lot of food co-ops will work on um, a monthly or a bi-monthly set of sales that they're offering. And so for us to be able to be a local provider and say, you know, every July, we are going to offer you know, bunched beads on special for two weeks. And I can look in the history of what we've offered. And so it's been a way for us to systematically set up um, deals for our buyers. Uh, we can, uh, I can have a deal for one buyer that doesn't perhaps relate to another buyer. So the, the platform also lets us do um, those kinds of things as well. Um, Excuse me. Um, so those are some of the things that have really worked well for us using the platform to as a as a farmer to sell to the Manana Food Co-op. Thank you so much, Jenny. That's awesome. Um, really appreciate you sharing your experience and um, echoing some of the things that I was showing. Uh, I would really love to talk to anyone who's curious to learn more. Um, like I said, to see a more in-depth demo. My contact information is uh, in the slide deck that I think you will receive after this presentation. But yeah, we really just are a really passionate group and 
you know, we're always growing and learning as well as, as things change in this crazy world we live in, you know, there's always new avenues for us to explore and ways to help you out. So um, really looking to collaborate with, with some new local farms looking to grow wholesale. Awesome. Thank you both. Yeah, that was very articulate. And Jenny, great to hear how it's helping you sell, sell more of your wonderful produce there. Emily, just real quick, might as well share your contact info verbally um, yeah. for people watching. I'm going to put it here in the chat, but it is emily at goforager.com. Um, and I'm the customer success manager, and we have a customer success team of three. The others are Beth and David, so they're same thing, Beth at goforager.com, uh, and David is David V at goforager.com. I'll put those in the chat as well. Um, so you could reach out to any of us. We're all available for demos and just quick phone calls if you prefer. And uh, yeah, if you have questions about, you know, what types of buyers we have on the platform in your area, um, who we're talking to for potential new buyers and any questions really that you have, we're, we're eager to talk to you. Great. Awesome. Yeah. And we will have time at the end if, if people want to do a Q and A kind of a thing. But if anyone has any burning questions for Emily or Jenny, feel free to ask them. And uh, Okay, great. Emily's got her contact info in the chat along with a couple of the other reps there. Perfect. Thanks. All right. Well, this might be a little untraditional, but I, as presenter number two, do have a burning question for, for Emily, which is um, you mentioned, you know, the idea of a producer getting on to the uh, forager platform. And, and you then mentioned, uh, you know, and when a buyer comes online in that area, you, you can start to make introductions. I thought that was really interesting because it sounds like producers can get signed up now, even if there isn't a buyer potentially in their area. It just sort of like um, might help in the development of a sort of forager community uh, down the road if you know that there are three or four farms interested. Can you explain a little bit about like that process, maybe leading your expansion? Maybe you have an example of that? Absolutely. Uh, so it, as Jenny mentioned, it's, it's free to join Forager as a supplier. So um, all you're really, you know, spending is a little bit of time to fill out that sign up form to get on. Um, I mentioned we're in 10 states, but you know, there's a lot more states out there that we're not in. So uh, we have this marketplace is what we call it. And it is our database of suppliers who have come online, um, whether they're actively using the platform or not. Um, the sign up form asks the kind of questions that we would need, the information that we would need to be able to essentially match make you to a buyer. Um, and that is all information that we reference every time a new buyer comes online. Um, to be able to provide that buyer with a marketplace of available products and suppliers as they come on board. So um, to give an example, we, uh, without naming names, we had a buyer in, in Massachusetts and they onboarded their local program. But at that time, you know, there was a little bit of press about it. A lot of suppliers heard that we were moving into Massachusetts. They were super excited about it. Um, we onboarded a network of suppliers at that time, but we really still only had this one small buyer in the state on the platform. So there was only so much growth we could potentially offer at that time. Um, and in the last couple of years, we've been able to onboard additional buyers, one of a few of them being just small independents like the first one, but one of them being a multi-store grocer um, with 20 locations opening up a lot of opportunity in Massachusetts. We also had a large institution come on board in Massachusetts. So having a network of suppliers already in that area for us to reach out to um, allowed us to instantly turn uh, a potential new relationship on for those suppliers who did that work maybe a year ago or even less than a year ago. Um, and for the buyers, it was instant visibility into a network of suppliers where they're trying to expand their local program. I hope that answers the question, but happy to provide more detail if you want clarity on anything there. But yeah, 
free to sign up and uh, we're happy to help you through that sign up process to make it as easy as possible. Great. Yeah, that was a great question, Hannah. Thank you for asking that. That's good to know. Cool. Well, I think, Hannah, yeah, I'll just pass it off to you. Tell us about this wonderful platform. You co-founded. <laughs> Great. Well, the the secret is I am not the original founder of FarmDrop. Um, so a community member in Blue Hill, Maine, um, uh, and Ben, I don't know why, but the green square is on your, so you might need to mute for it to switch over to me or the video won't show me or it's stuck. I'm not sure. <laughs> Um, so anyway, I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Hannah Semler, and I am the CEO of FarmDrop, CEO standing for Community Engagement Orchestrator. I really dig into each community, work with farms and market hub managers to build an online uh, community food system that is building on the sort of weekly cycle that local food customers tend to be in already, whether they're going to the farmer's market or they're signed up to a CSA, it tends to be uh, the weekly aspirational local food shopper that also comes to farm drop. And so the basics are that we um, originally were in Blue Hill, Maine. Uh, we were started by a community member that wanted to offer year round access to local food. There was no winter farmer's market at that time in Blue Hill, Maine. And of course the cost of heating a space and just the um, complications of winter uh, made it so that they were looking for a technology solution to make it more efficient, more time uh, effective for producers to be able to just drop off their product and have a community institution, community member organization or one of the farms uh, be the one that put all of that product that they aggregated from all the different farms together into boxes and bags and have the customers pick up midweek in the evening after work um, and then go on their merry way home with all their lovely local groceries. So we're a, a solution for um, expanding local food systems at the community level. Um, we tend to operate, like I said, midweek. Uh, the customer pickup tends to be in the evenings um, and each market hub pretty much sets their own uh, logistics based on the producer network, uh, the customers, and the just what's going to work in each community. So on the one hand, we have a technology that is now offering an online sales platform to over 200 farms. Um, some of them are active only seasonally. We currently, right now in winter, have about 110 um, across 15 different market hubs. Uh, well, actually only 12 live right now. Um, most of which are in Maine, two are in New York, and one is coming soon in Tucson, Arizona. And the way that we are different is that farmers all put their products up online. They set their own prices, they set their own inventory, and um, but their, pro their products are uh, online and available alongside other farmers' products. So let's say 20 farmers have all of their different products, dairy, bread, uh, vegetables, prepared foods. Um, and so we build a shared marketing platform just by nature of having those products and the visibility of those products sitting side by side um, on, our, on our market hubs. And each market hub has a unique set of farmers. However, some farmers are uh, looking to sell on more than one farm drop market hub. They can't just with their one inventory. And Lou, who is here from Abrams, uh, Creamery will be talking about that in a little bit and his experience uh, working with Farm Drop and how that's helped expand the business. And, um, and really, it's through collaboration that uh, we've been able to build these Farm Drop market hubs. So every market hub lands within a community because there's a market hub manager. It can be a farm, a nonprofit, a local business that wants to manage what it takes to run a Farm Drop market hub. And that manager gets paid per order. So there's a $5 fee that the customer pays um, for every order that they place on farm job that goes to cover the cost of the service that the market hub manager um, is providing to their community. Farmers 
put their full price up on uh, online and customers check out from multiple different producers. And basically what we have developed is a multi-vendor payment processing system. But it's not just the different vendors that get paid. Farm Drop gets paid, we take 5% of sales. Um, and the Market Hub Manager gets paid, but then delivery drivers can also get paid separately. And different pickup locations that build up and around the main Market Hub um, get paid separately. And so what's unique about our system is that we've created this shared revenue model where Farm Drop can come in and support and, and provide economic impact to not only farmers, but the community of people that ultimately it takes to build resilient food systems um, at the local level. And so um, we'd like to say that we create sort of gig economy jobs, part-time jobs. Um, we have a, a, a new mom that's just starting up a farm drop in Munion uh, to serve the mid coast. Um, you know, we have a very busy farmer who needs another source of income and runs a farm drop um, as an additional way to get their products to market in collaboration with the different farmers in their area. Um, and so ultimately we're looking to build community through collaboration, uh, getting producers um, an additional sales channel through which to expand their direct to consumer business. Um, and, you know, one of our farmers mentioned in Blue Hill, they said, you know, I could never add another farmer's market to my very busy week. It's too much time. It's too, too much labor. It's too much cost, but they can drop off product at a farm drop and serve 30, 50, maybe 100 customers um, within a week, depending on how many market hubs they're, um, they're on and they're selling on. So I wanted to give you a little bit of a demo as well, just so that you can see the, the platform. Um, and let's see if I can pull it up correctly here. Um, okay, so you're gonna see the orders. <laughs> first, but I'm just gonna show you what it looks like from the customer perspective. So customers come in and um, if they're logged in, they click shop now and they go straight to whatever market hub they have signed up to. They can change what market hub they uh, want to buy from. Let's say if they're going on vacation to a different uh, community. And then they, when the store is open, which Portland uh, just closed, they can browse all these different products. They can go by category. They can go by producer. There's Abrams Creamery right there. I thought it'd be fun to introduce Lou's product since he's about to speak. Um, and and uh, products can get added to cart when the store is open. Um, and basically, you know, the checkout process, like most of you are familiar with, um, happens. And um, all of the information then gets split. Uh, strategically to all the different parties. The market hub manager gets their full order so that when the time comes, they'll be able to pack that order into a bag and customers will pick it up. The producers get their pick list and they get their pack list. And there's also a labeling system coming soon. Um, and then producers are responsible for their own logistics. So depending on you know, what market they're serving that day, um, there's a certain cutoff time by which products need to arrive at the market hub. They get packed by the market hub manager. And a lot of times that process is also collaborative. So one of the things that you do when you create one day a week in which you have all of these farms, you know, selling their products from let's say Saturday to Tuesday, and then they have to distribute on Thursday and they're coming from similar directions. There's a lot of collaboration that Farm Drop sort of inspires through this sort of organized weekly distribution system. And so farmers get to work together to bring their products to market, um, drop off those products, and also collaborate with the Market Hub Manager in order fulfillment. So our most sort of traditional way for Farm Drop is that producers drop off in bulk and it's the Market Hub Manager's job to fill those orders. But more recently, and I think mainly due to the pandemic, we saw a real, a very big increase in customer um, interest in Farm Drop. And so market up managers needed help. Um, and it was a more collaborative way to also make sure that a producer's products made it to the customer and that there were no errors in order fulfillment if producers went order by order and just basically filled their own orders. 
So that became a really interesting um, sort of new uh, model for uh, order fulfillment. Then the other aspect through which we collaborate with producers is that if they're packing their order, they might you know, wait a few more minutes um, and have their own pickup location back at their farm. And so that is an additional way in which those farmers can reach their communities. They can bring those orders closer to where customers want to pick them up um, and therefore build basically a hyper collaborative food system through and through marketing, the sales, the distribution, the order fulfillment, and then the pickup is all through this sort of culture of producers banding together to secure that direct to consumer market that's so important um, to get the price points they need to be sustainable and to then be able to expand to more communities and more market hubs as they pop up. Um, so it's been really interesting now with 12 markets, um, 10 of those in Maine, seeing the cross collaboration occur, the sort of sister hubs as we call them. And I can talk a little bit more about the technology from the standpoint of how it works from um, the vendor. Um, so I wanna go in here, you'll see me sort of in the back end of, um, of the market hub, but each vendor has their own account on Farm Drop. And so um, when a farmer signs in to uh, a market hub um, and they get enabled, they connect to a Stripe account through which their payments are gonna come through. Um, and then they're able to add their products with a simple dashboard um, where they add their own pictures and we support with sort of basic marketing tips. Um, they set their own prices um, and the system sort of keeps like, uh, like we were talking earlier with Jenny, keeps a live inventory of what's been purchased. And so if there's 10 of something and 10 of something gets purchased, then the product becomes out of stock and the customer gets a notification. I mean, the producer gets a notification. Um, and, uh, and so then another aspect of what we've been doing is we've been also like adding, I'll, I'll work with this draft product Lou, so I don't mess up anything that's live. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna go in and just give you a sense of what it looks like once you've created a product. So we have over um, 5,000 products on our uh, 12 market hubs. And those are all, I mean, unique products. Like each product is connected to one farm and uh, you know, no kale is the same. So um, we have 200 producers, 5,000 products and 10,000 customers that are signed up to our system. Um, and we are, uh, you know, getting about, um, uh, what was I talking about? Okay. So the product, um, editing is interesting because you can set prices, you can set discounts, you can set categories, but you can also set visibility. And so we've just, uh, launched some new, um, features that have to do with the visibility of product, not just for the retail customers, but expanding to wholesale customers, creating a discount wholesale market, and also creating EBT access. The kind of wholesale that we're looking at is the small wholesale. They don't um, you know, operate or work with Forager, for example, but they might um, be sort of a seasonal restaurant or a small co-op or small grocery store that uh, you know, can't afford the sort of technology investment, but they want to be able to access um, some of the products that are available through Farm Drop in small quantities, and they can't meet the minimums of their local distributors. And so they're more likely to want to order, you know, $100 of this from one of the farms. And through our collaborative distribution networks, we get those products to market to those wholesale buyers. So th these are just some of the ways in which one product entry can all of a sudden become available not only to one market hub, but to many market hubs, uh, depending on how many markets that producer is signed up to. And at the same time, it can be available not only to one direct consumer customer, but also um, and to a discount wholesale customer or to an EBT customer. And so we're working really hard to get EBT online. Um, up until now, it's only been the big guys that have been able to do that. But um, we have been able to have sort of like a workaround where EBT customers can register as an EBT customer and a pay later option um, makes it possible for them to at least pre-order. And then once they get to the market hub to pick up their, um, their order, they're able to check out with their EBT cards. 
Um, what else? I will just say, you know, um, it's, it's really common that our producers are also market hub managers, um, or I should say our market hub managers are also producers. And so I would say just to anyone listening to this today, um, you know, as a, as a producer, it's, it's really interesting to think about how you might want to uh, create a network of producers interested in farm drop, um, but also how you might become the market hub manager for that community. Um, it's also something that I've thought about recently could be a rotating thing. So people sign up to be the market hub manager for different years, um, but that ultimately it, it's a community driven um, online technology platform that can be used for an individual farm, like Jordan's Farm in Cape Elizabeth. They run it as an online farm stand. It can be run as like a multi-farm CSA model, or it can be run as an online farmer's market. Uh, we're currently expanding nationally and we're looking for farms and communities that want to implement this model. And um, yeah, I just, I'll, I'll hand it over to Lou to talk about his experience with Farm Drop. And um, if we are, um, yeah, we can talk later about Q&A and just, you know, what it means to get started with Farm Drop as a producer. So I'll stop sharing my screen and hand it over to Lou. Thank you, Hannah. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I guess the biggest thing about Farm Drop is it's all about the customer. Um, we used to be involved in farmers markets, um, but if I don't know if you're familiar with how farmers markets work, but they're very political and they're not customer driven. Um, for example, let's say that we have our goat cheese that we sell, um, and we want to go in the Orno market. Well, if there's already a vendor there that carries goat cheese, you're not allowed to bring it because they want to have only one farmer for that particular product. So that is not customer driven. Customer driven is if I'm if my wife wants to go to Orno Farmers Market and she wants to buy Abraham's cheese, or she wants to buy Springdale's cheese, she has that choice of choosing what product she she selects. Um, so the, the uh, farm drop is completely different. It's, it's uh, customer oriented. What we want is our customers to know on any given day, they can go on the platform and order exactly what they want for their family from any given number of farmers. Um, it, it's been a huge um, benefit to the local uh, communities to be able to have that uh, choice of products without having to worry about, okay, today I want to get Abraham's cheese, so I'm going to go to Orno, but in the afternoon I'm going to drive to Bangor because I want to get Springdale's cheese. It's completely different. These folks can order everything online, um, come and pick up. They may cover seven or eight farmers markets in one trip by ordering online they can pick from all the local farmers go to that particular farm and pick up the product and go home with their bags of goodies um, farm drop is an amazing uh, marketing tool for our farm um, we currently do not do farmers markets anymore it's strictly uh, farm drop um, I don't know if that helps, but that's the, that's the, the basic premise behind farm drop is the customer rather than the committee or the, uh, because nothing happens until something's sold for farmers. I mean, you can grow all you want, but if you don't sell it, it's not going to be much good to you. Lou, can I prompt you with a question? You might not get an answer, but sure. <laughs> um, will, would, can you run us through like your week? Because you sell on three different farm drop market hubs, if not four. Um, uh, yeah, I think so. Three or four, I think. So, um, so let's say, uh, you know, like uh, your, your Wednesday system, 
you know, what do you do? I'm going to back up and answer that question a little bit because there's something I forgot. If you compare this marketing um, system to, say, a farmer's market, in the farmer's market, we would we used to load up our coolers, guess at how much stuff we would sell, pack it all up, take it, sit there for four or five hours in the sun with cheese. Maybe it's people didn't come out that day. You bring all that product back, you put it back, and once it's been exposed to the warm weather, it doesn't last. So one of the biggest benefits of the farm drop is I know ahead of time how much product to bring. There's no waste. That was a, another key part. But a typical, like on, say for example, the market, uh, say I delivered a substantial order to one of the farm drops, uh, today's Thursday, so that market ended on Tuesday. So on Tuesday afternoon, I knew what I had to have prepared for Thursday morning delivery. Um, three of our markets ended today. So I know what I have to take tomorrow to deliver those products. Um, but it's basically Wednesday, Thursday, Friday are the days that we deliver to the farm drop locations. And so the part that I also didn't explain that I think is interesting to talk about is, you know, farmers only deliver what has already been sold. And that is completely flipping the system of our food system away from putting the risk on farmers and instead putting the risk, to be very honest, on customers. It's ultimately the customer that might not get something uh, because, you know, a mistake along the way. And then it's the farmer's job to refund that customer. And we do have a policy, you know, like 100% satisfaction guaranteed or a refund, um, you know, because, and that just basically means, obviously, if you don't get your product, like we're going to make sure that you get refunded. But but ultimately, it's, it's basically building on the CSA model instead of getting paid in advance of the season, which is also a wonderful model, you're getting paid in advance to the work that you're going to do to then get that product to market. Yeah. So uh, just to clarify, uh, a person placing an order, whether it be a direct consumer order, consumer or uh, like a wholesale situation, when they order it, they're paying for it right away. So the suppliers are getting paid right away for the product. Yes. That's right. Yeah. That's really awesome. You know, a lot of the time in, in these circumstances, the suppliers are put on, you know, a net terms waiting period before they get paid. Exactly. And it's what's wrong with the whole system is that basically we're all eating things at our dinner table that the farmer hasn't gotten paid for yet. And that is just immoral. <laughs> so like we're not going to make the farmer even harvest the product until they've gotten paid for it. And that is a huge flip that we don't, you know, talk about it a lot because people don't think about it. They don't think about it when they're ordering on Amazon. They pay Amazon well before they get that product, but they know they're going to get it. And one of the things that we pride ourselves on is we have a very, very good order fulfillment rate. It's very few refunds in, in any given week or in any given month that we, and that's because it's, it's, you know, a manageable amount of products being sold per farm and a manageable amount of products being sold at each market hub. Um, that ultimately makes its way directly into the customers. Last thing I'll mention is the freshness. You cannot compare, especially, you know, during the season with vegetables, it's been harvested that morning. So not only do we reduce the waste that might come from these other models and the sort of um, injustice of farmers not getting paid, but we're also addressing the, the waste that might happen, you know, because the product isn't fresh and doesn't last in people's refrigerators. Products on farm drop have been harvested the day before or the day of, and they've got two to three week shelf life, depending on the product. If it's, we're talking about like leafy greens, of course, you know, all other things have different kinds of shelf lives, but um, yeah, really important, the freshness and nutritional quality of what's being delivered through the farm drop system is, is also a really uh, sort of unparalleled quality. I don't think I have anything else to add.
It's um, it's a wonderful program. Do have you found any other systems like like? And I'm I'm actually I'm asking this very uh, honestly. Uh, any other systems that sort of parallel the the level of collaboration that we have at Farm Drop? Have I? Yeah. Are there other? No, any? no. There's nothing like Farm Drop. Farm Drop is. Um, it's hard to describe because you have what it's the group of farmers that are actually together working together and we help each other out um it's a it's a very much a team effort a very much a uh, you know when i go to unity and i don't but some of the people who work for me take this stuff to unity it's they're together and they're talking about different things on each other's farms and a couple of times, you know, I was getting back, getting back to what I was talking about with the farmers markets about if you sell pork, you're the only vendor. Well, we have three pork vendors on one market hub. Um, and the customer will say, well, I want to buy Abraham's bacon. Well, I want to buy Outland's bacon. And several times we've messed up with our inventory. We didn't have bacon. So Heather from Outland gave the customer her bank and of course we paid her back so it's constantly working together um sorting the products um we're we ha each one of us helps even though we're competitors it's uh we all work together but there's nothing and the other services that we use to deliver our products wholesale there isn't that teamwork and there isn't that um that relationship that we have with the other farmers because we use other platforms other for for wholesale we use something else um with retail it is is definitely the farm drop i love that rising tide lifts all ships idea of you, all the farmers helping each other out that's really oh, good to hear yeah Great. Well, we can open it up if anyone has any questions about any of these platforms or any comments. Um, really appreciate our speakers making time to join us here. Hannah, I was wondering, so I, I've got another kind of project and we've got a little farm stand where, you know, we sell our own produce, but I bet if we had more stuff we could get more customers you think farm drop might be a good thing for that type of a situation we just get any answer farm. that one? Oh yeah yeah please okay we have um, a goat farm and creamer we have pork and eggs and cheese and so on but we also do um goat cheese brick oven pizzas and we do a lot of catering and that sort of thing for weddings when we set the oven up here at the farm, we thought, you know, a good way to get exposure for our farm is to have more people come here. So we set up, not only do we take our products to the Unity Farm Drop, while we're waiting there, we've listed our farm as a pickup location. So 15 other farms bring their products to our farm and then that brings more people to our farm. So, you know, you have a small farm stand and if you had more products, you'd have more people and it, it definitely works that way. Oh, good to hear, cool. And also Ben, I mean, absolutely. I mean, not only would you, we're, we're going, you know, it's the same kind of mentality of um, a customer would have to go and drive to each individual farm to get the kind of product variety that we offer um, just on Farm Drop. And similarly, like, you know, you, you would have to go and collect product and develop relationships with all these different farms in order to carry their product. And then you'd be holding the risk for that product if it didn't sell. With Farm Drop, you're just like, okay, I'm gonna pop up my little farm stand and then I'm gonna invite others. You don't have to invite others like Jordan's Farm just manages their own inventory and they run the Cape Elizabeth farm drop, but they have the option and they're actually starting to do that of adding other farms, whether it be seasonal, 
um, whether it be certain specialty products. And so you can be like a 20 farm farm drop, you can be a three farm farm drop, you can be a one farm farm drop with the option of having a farm ad. The, the point is that you'll ultimately like with the paying in advance and, and not having farmers hold the risk with the ability for each uh, user of farm drop to have their own entry point into this shared marketing platform. Everybody is at the same time responsible for their own lane and working in collaboration by default with everybody else. So yes, the benefits of that are, are huge. Yeah. Wow. That's great. Cool. Well, any other questions from anyone out there? I'm going to launch this second poll. And um, did everyone share their contact info in case folks who are watching this video want to get in touch? Hannah, yours is on the screen, but it's Hannah at farmdrop.us. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, ben, something I wanted to throw in. Uh, that I just thought of while you all were talking. Um, we have some farms, some farmers who are on our platform in a more seasonal capacity as well, where they have a really tight direct to consumer market for most of their growing season. Um, they have a farm stand or they you know, use other channels and that's sort of their primary revenue feed throughout the year, uh, the growing season. But then towards the end of the year, um, they might be sitting on sort of an excess of certain products that, you know, they have a bumper crop, they did incredibly well, um, maybe they plan for storage crop. Either way, um, some of them just come onto the platform during that end of season time frame where they're really looking to move bulk quantities of product um, to a wholesale market. So um, Forager plays a role in sort of helping secure if we can in advance, but sometimes even in a last minute capacity, um, like a volume buy with a single buyer for those suppliers who are just trying to get one last push mm -hmm. out of the end of the crop season of products. So I don't know, just your question sort of made me think about that. And I wanted to throw that in there for folks who are listening um, because you know some vendors prefer to just really manage things at a direct consumer level. Maybe some folks are on the smaller side and and don't really want to use a technology solution for the majority of their wholesale, but it can kind of come in handy to have Forager in your back pocket during those times of the year as well. Hmm. Cool, yeah, glad you shared that. I was gonna mention also, Emily, I don't know what your experience has been, but, um, and, and where maybe Jenny or, or Lou wanna comment as well, but has there been any, um, just sort of change in the willingness of farms to adopt technology that you've seen since you launched to now. And I know the pandemic had a huge effect on that, but. Absolutely. It, it really started at the, I, I don't want to say it started at the beginning of the pandemic because we've always had, you know, varying degrees of willingness, excitedness about using technology, but, uh, when the pandemic started, people really started to, we actually had a big push of suppliers come to us because we're a Portland, Maine company. And so a lot of our, uh, a lot of the farmers in the area relied heavily on restaurant business. And that just completely went away overnight for some folks. And they were really like, we planned this year to sell this much product to all these restaurants and they're not there anymore. We need to find some backup solutions. So um, I think for that reason alone, people are more willing to use technology. More people have been forced to sort of step out of their comfort zone with technology and try new solutions. So um, yeah, Forager definitely experienced an expansion of supplier relationships at that time. And for our onboarding buyers, it's been um, sort of easier to help them see the value proposition of leveraging technology. How about you? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that uh, we definitely had more of a customer um, sort of stampede <laughs> to, to farm drop, uh, you know, and then that sort of like tapered off and balanced out. Um, and, and I guess I would say, I mean, we've been around since 2011. 
Um, and so we've been constantly improving on the technology and, and making it sort of easier and easier. And it's all of our, I should say all of our technology development is driven by farmers. So we, we were very true to that. Um, we were started by a group of farms in Blue Hill and we continue to be uh, farmer driven in terms of, um, you know, there's always input for all new features go through sort of like a QA process with, with different farms and we're getting better and better about doing that. But I would say that um, it's not so much the actual use of technology, it's the usefulness and how uh, the perception of its usefulness has changed. And so where previously it wasn't, oh, I don't know how to do technology. It's more like, why would I do that? I will lose sort of the connection to my customer. Um, Jenny mentioned this. And I think, um, I think we're still working out exactly how to, you know, use the online marketing and the communication that we do and sort of like meeting customers like where they are in terms of the information that they are um, digesting or, or, or not digesting but like we have a lot of uh, opportunity around storytelling uh, using online marketing systems and social media and sort of sharing stories about local farming I think we're still you know catching up on that with that opportunity um, but you know, I would say that that there's less questioning about the usefulness, and now it's more and continues to be about like how easy it is to use, how accurate, um, you know, how how dynamic, how flexible, um, you know. And so that's actually one of the one of the changes that we made to our system is we added in wholesale, kind of like the opposite of most systems we're adding in direct to consumer because wholesale accounts had sort of gone away. And we found that we needed to add wholesale because um, it was going to allow us to support farmers that need to sell more and that want um, to work with these smaller grocers and smaller restaurants to sort of create an online option for them to access multiple farms at once. So I would say that still seems to be difficult is wholesalers themselves, the buyers, um getting to the point where they're using technology but i don't know if if that's uh if that's coming soon lou would you say um farm drop has helped you be able to do the things you love to do more at the farm and not, oh not worry about yes yeah well, let's cut our payroll for one thing um because we don't hire people to go to different markets um, but it definitely has given me more time here at the farm. Um, you know, it's basically one day a week I leave. Uh, I go on Thursdays, but the, the other market, the other farm drop uh, hubs are serviced by folks that work for us. But it definitely has freed up. But the biggest thing is there's no waste. I mean, when, I, when we leave the farm, everything is sold and paid for. We go out with our products and we don't bring any back. Um, that's one of the biggest advantages. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, it's yeah, it's inspiring to see these platforms that are helping farmers succeed and helping build little kind of ecosystems of, of local food networks. So good on all of you for... <laughs> for helping farmers and for, for Lou and Jenny for helping other farmers know how they, they can use these tools to uh, serve their customers and uh, waste less and, and sell more. So yeah, thank you all so much. Unless any you. final comments. Um, yeah, thanks for making the time. I know you all are very busy, so we, we thank you and Hopefully people will be contacting you and or your your team over there. <laughs> Great. Thanks so much, everyone. Nice to see Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Thank you. you. Have, have a great night. Have a good one.